This here is the MSI Stealth 18. No more MacBook. For now, anyway. I'm excited to test this out. I'm going to be using this laptop for editing, gaming, and everything in between. And I do these videos not only to experience these new devices, but also to show you guys the ins and outs. So my goal is always to live with it as much as possible so I can give you the best feedback. But this has been keeping up with my editing needs, productivity, it's introduced me to the world of video games, like I've always been a gamer, but mainly on console, and you know, people always say it's better on PC, whether that's true, I guess, we will find out. But come along with me, let's take a look. About a year ago, I did my first video on an MSI gaming PC. And honestly, that was my first ever gaming PC. I've always been a console user. And so it was a breath of fresh air for sure. I absolutely loved the performance. It was great. The only problem was it was a big computer. And so for me moving around traveling, it's just not ideal. And so today we're talking about something that's much more suited to me and my lifestyle, which is a new MSI gaming laptop. So I just want to show you guys how big this laptop is. So this is the brand new MSI Stealth 18 gaming laptop. And yeah, it is quite the size. So the official name is the MSI Stealth 18 HX AI A2XW, which is quite a mouthful. But when you look at the specs underneath inside this laptop, you'll actually be blown away because for this size and form factor, it actually packs a punch. And this laptop is basically a slimmer, more portable version of the MSI Raider. In terms of the design and the build, the Stealth 18 features a slim magnesium alloy chassis. It measures in about an inch thick, weighs about 2.89 kilograms, just over six pounds. So it is light for its category and size, but obviously still not ideal for traveling around with. I really like the finish of this laptop. So it comes in midnight black and it has minimal branding. It gives it a really nice professional, clean premium look. And I like how it doesn't really stand out too much, other than the size. The hinge is super solid to hold that giant display, and something nice is the laptop can be opened with one hand. The camera on the inside actually has this little handle on the top, so you can use that as a grip when opening the display. So I've mentioned it a couple times now, but yeah, the footprint of this laptop is gigantic. So despite it being smaller and thinner than the Raider, it's still a big laptop. And if you're the type of person that does want something to commute with and bring around with you, Straight up, I'm gonna have to say don't go with this laptop because it won't even fit into my backpacks. As soon as I powered this laptop on and I saw how good the display was, that's when it really hit me that this is probably the best laptop I've ever used before. So it packs an 18 inch 4K mini LED display, UHD+, you got 120 Hertz and HDR1000 support with 100% DCI-P3 color coverage. And you're getting a two million to one color to contrast ratio. And honestly, the panel is so vibrant. All the colors really pop. It's got deep contrast. So in terms of that Intel Core Ultra 9, so it's the 275HX. It has eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores, and it clocks in up to 5.4 gigahertz. And honestly, this chip flies through everything. And paired with the graphics card inside of this laptop, it pretty much allows you to max out every single game that I've tested. And the graphics card alone has 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 RAM, which is just insane. For standard RAM, you have 64 gigabytes of DDR5, and you can get it up to 96 gigabytes if you really want. Personally, even playing games and video editing and having Lightroom open and coding, I've not had any problem with the RAM being full, so I personally don't need more than 64. This particular unit comes with a super fast 2TB PCLE Gen 4 NVMe SSD. It's got plenty of storage, quick load times, and if you want even more space, you can actually configure it up to 4TB. I did a bunch of Geekbench tests and 3 d Mark tests. And this combo shows desktop level performance, it's actually crazy. You genuinely can do 4K video editing, 3D rendering, play AAA games at like ultra setting, and you're just not gonna have any problem whatsoever. Something super nice is this computer comes with one free month of Game Pass, which I did try and I played games like GTA as well as Call of Duty, and you can literally max out everything in those games and it runs perfectly smooth. The only problem is if you are using battery power, you will need to be plugged in. Otherwise, you're just not going to get that full performance. That's just something to consider. And the battery life isn't really great on this laptop. You're only going to get a couple hours of actually gaming when you do have those intense settings turned on. 
but it does pack a 99.9 watt hour battery, which is the max legal limit capacity for flights. So it does deliver around four or five hours of light productivity. But like I said, gaming, it's just a couple hours. It dramatically shortens the battery life down to, you know, two, three hours. Depends what you're doing really. But over the last couple of weeks, I have played a lot of games on this laptop. And one thing I really do like is the keyboard. So it does pack a Steel Series keyboard, and I just really like the layout I find on a lot of other MSI laptops. I've been a little bit confused and it's taken me some time to adjust to the different layout that I'm used to. But the keys are super nice, there's a lot of travel, they're RGB backlit which are fully customizable, and you can set up macros and shortcuts and all the usual stuff in the built-in MSI software. Something that really surprised me was actually the trackpad. It is very good, there's a lot of space, you can make use of all the gestures in the new version of Windows, and it has a decent tactical click and feedback when you are using it. It could be a little bit stronger for my liking, and overall it doesn't feel as solid as some other laptops I've tried, but I'd say it's definitely one of the better ones out there. So obviously with all that power, it's gonna create a lot of heat. And so MSI has actually thought of that and packed a lot in terms of the cooling system. So inside of here, there's a vapor chamber with dual fans and four exhaust fans, and all of that together dramatically improves and reduces the laptop from overheating. Something really nice is MSI redesigned the internal fan structure, so now you have this thing called IntraFlow. They're actually using extra fan perforations in order to create an internal airflow inside this laptop, so it circulates the air much more efficiently, and it reduces the temperature of components, obviously, which improves the cooling efficiency and overall the performance that you're going to get out of this laptop. And paired with that is the new AI engine built-in, which dynamically controls fan speed based on the load. Under high loads, this laptop can definitely maintain those high clock speeds without there being a crazy loud noise. Now there is this fan boost mode, which I often use, which uses function on the up arrow key. And that does turn on the fans to maximum. I personally like that because otherwise it just gets too hot to even like put on my lap or even on my desk, I get a little bit worried, but it is super loud when you do put it in that mode. Pretty much sounds like a jet engine taking off. So as you can imagine. And the magnesium alloy definitely helps disperse heat, but it does get pretty hot to the touch. And I often find when I close the laptop and I put it away, I often hear the fans coming back on in the background. Like I don't really know why, but the laptop's asleep and then it will wake up and the fans will just go crazy and they'll just run at high speed. And I guess that's to cool it down a little bit after the gaming, but considering it's closed, it just seems kind of like unnecessary. So in terms of connectivity on this laptop, you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are USB-C power delivery. So you can actually use those to output to a display and also charge your laptop. You also have two USB type A 3.2 gen two ports and HDMI 2.1, which allows 8K 60 output or 4K 120 if you want to hook up another monitor. And something I always appreciate is SD card slots on a laptop. As a video editor and as a photographer, I like to have an SD card slot so I don't have to carry around a bunch of dongles like I do on other laptops. So having that built in, it makes it super nice. But yeah, there, there's a lot of ports on here. You have a DC power port on the back, which is actually a pretty good placement if you want to use your laptop while sitting at the desk. So then the cable management is just on point, like it just goes directly over the back of the desk. I don't know why every laptop doesn't have it in the back. It actually does make sense. And you also have an ethernet port in case you do want to get those high speeds. Or if you are using Wi-Fi, you do have Wi-Fi 7 packed in here. And you also have Bluetooth 5.4. So I've been using a controller with this laptop. I've had barely any latency and absolutely no problems with connectivity. There's actually a great audio system built into this laptop. Two tweeters, four woofers. So I don't often use laptop speakers. I tend to use headphones, but there is some insane speakers in here. The bezels on the laptop tend to be pretty thin. The only area where they are a little bit chunky is at the top. So you do have a full HD webcam, which is nice for your video calls. And then you also have your IR face unlock sensor. So you have the Windows Hello thing where it unlocks your laptop and it works super fast, works in the dark. I've had no problem, like it just works every single time. But if you do wanna use fingerprint, there is a fingerprint scanner as well. That's also super good, super accurate and very fast. And something nice to see is the privacy slider. So if you do get a little bit nervous with your webcam pointed at you, you can slide that switch and have a physical cover. If you're a student and you need something for class, personally, I wouldn't really recommend this laptop purely because battery life is weak and it is super clunky and big to carry around with you. It's just not ideal, to be honest. 
you'd probably be better off getting a slightly cheaper notebook and a cheaper desktop at home just to give you that full well-rounded experience and also to to prevent you being tempted to game because when i'm trying to be productive on here having the capabilities to play games is distracting for me so having a laptop like a macbook that doesn't have the option to even play games it kind of forces me to get my work done which i like but if you really only have the budget for one singular device yes this does it all so now let's talk about the price point because you know considering they fit so much in terms of power into the size of this laptop and made it super portable with a great display it's going to cost a lot of money and so it is pretty expensive in canadian it prices in at four thousand two hundred dollars or in usd two thousand nine hundred ninety nine so three thousand usd obviously it depends on your configuration how much storage what type of graphics card you put in here but I am really enjoying using this laptop. It definitely is fun to just, you know, play some games, sit back, chill, and also get productivity stuff done on the side. I think the only problem I have with it is definitely the portability, like I mentioned, because yeah, like, I mean, it won't even fit in my backpack, which is just crazy. So if I want to go and bring it out with me, I'm not even able to do that at this point. I need to go buy a new backpack. The included charging brick is also insanely powerful and huge. So bringing that with you as well just adds a lot of weight to your bag. So that's my take on this laptop. Personally, I don't game a lot. I mainly do productivity and video editing, which this can do, but I feel like a lot of other laptops are also capable of that, that are way smaller and better for if I wanna travel, edit on a flight, or even just, you know, bring it with me day to day, which is what I usually do because I like to just sit in cafes and edit photos and, and do little tasks like that, but I don't need something quite so powerful. Like I don't see myself sitting in Starbucks playing Call of Duty, just don't think it will happen. So yeah, for me personally, I think I'd rather go with something a little bit lighter, smaller, less powerful, but it really depends on you and your needs. So if you want like the best of the best, the absolute most power you can get out your laptop, then you should definitely buy this laptop right here, 100%. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.